A little boy was sitting in his bedroom one day, and he was shooting his Nerf gun at the wall. He was pretty bored, and that's why he was sitting in his room shooting his Nerf gun at the wall. He couldn't think of anything else to do. He was totally bored. It had been raining earlier in the day, but now it was clearing up, and he looked out his window and decided that he wanted to go outside. So he got off of his bed, put away his Nerf gun, and went out the front door and said, Mom, I'm going out to play. And she said, Okay, dear, have fun. And so he left the house. And he started to walk down the street, going toward his favorite park, thinking that that would be a fun place to to play. But as he was doing that, as he was walking along, he suddenly stopped because he saw something that he had never seen before. There was a house. Now, of course, his street had lots of houses on it, but he was very familiar with this street and he knew all about all the houses. And he knew perfectly well that this particular house that he was seeing, he had never seen before. This house had definitely not been there yesterday. It was a beautiful house. It looked brand new. It was mostly white and had a lot of windows. So it seemed to be made out of white something or other. Stone or concrete or brick or whatever, he couldn't tell. And a lot of glass. It looked like something that came out of an Ikea catalog or something. And he just saw himself staring at it, thinking, what in the world is this thing? How did this come here? He knew, as most kids kind of know instinctually, even though adults have kind of forgotten by the time they grow up, he knew that there was magic here. Kids can sense those things, even if their parents can't always. And he started to walk up the walkway and up toward the front door. He wasn't sure what he was going to do when he got there. He kind of had a vague idea of maybe knocking, but he also kind of thought maybe he'd just walk in. He was he didn't end up knocking. He was spared that trouble by the door suddenly opening up. And he just walked right inside. Of course, normally, I like to emphasize, this little boy knows that you don't just walk into a strange house. That is not okay. But Magic houses are different, and this house was definitely magic, and he knew it, as I said before. When he walked in, he found himself in a very beautiful front room. There was very nice-looking furniture uh, throughout the, the room. There was a coffee table and some couches and chairs next to it. And as he walked up to the coffee table, he saw magazines sitting on there. He picked up one of the magazines and saw that the magazine was called Universe. He opened it up and saw some of the most amazing things he'd ever seen. Places he'd never imagined. He sat down and he started flipping through some more. Seeing an island with purple sand and dragons flying around. A strange pink forest. Sand uh, beaches with with green uh, sand, all kinds of crazy places. He saw m asteroid belts and meteor showers. He saw saw stars that were that were bright, but but uh, just dim enough that you could actually walk on them, which was kind of crazy. He didn't know that existed. While he was doing this, all of a sudden he was startled by a voice. A woman's voice that came and it sounded as if it were coming from everywhere. It said, please state your destination. And he's like, what? And he heard the voice again say, welcome to the enchanted house. Please state your de desired destination. And he looked around, didn't see anybody there. And he said, where can I go? And the voice said, the Enchanted House can take you anywhere in the universe. And the boy said, Really? Whoa. Well, he started looking through the magazines again, trying to see if he could find the place that he wanted to go. But 
as he was looking through, nothing really, uh, nothing really stood out to him as a place he wanted to go. So he said, so do I have to find a place in these magazines? And the boy said, no. Please state your desired destination. And he thought, hmm. And then he said, is there a place in the universe where there are unicorns? And the voice said, there are 1,523,615 planets in the known universe that have unicorns. It's like, whoa. Well, um, okay. Is there one in particular I should go to? The voice said, Approximately half of those planets with unicorns have unicorns that are carnivorous and will probably eat you. And the voice said, So let's rule out those half. And so he thought, and he said, Are there any, uh, any planets with, with nice unicorns that live in uh, forests that have... Oh, I don't know. And he looked at uh, he looked at the magazine and saw uh, a type of star that, that glowed blue, and said, "Okay, is there any planets out there in the universe that have unicorns, the kind that don't eat kids, um, that live in forests and have one of those blue suns?" And the voice said, "Yes, there is one planet." That fits your description. And he said, All right, take me there. And then the voice said, Please be seated and stay seated throughout the duration of the transportation. And so he sat down and waited for something to happen. Nothing really happened. But after about a minute, he heard the voice say, You have arrived at your destination. Please exit through the front door. And so, very excited, he got up. And he was about to run to the front door, but then he was like, Maybe I shouldn't run. Maybe I should just walk carefully. So he walked carefully. The door opened. And as he stepped out, he saw himself in an amazing forest. And he knew he was not on a forest, in a forest anywhere on earth. Nothing looked the same. There were trees, but they didn't look like any trees he'd ever seen on Earth. There were little tiny animals scurrying around, and none of them looked like the kind of animals they, they have on Earth. He walked out, and he saw that there was a path. Now, he didn't know who made the path, but he figured he would walk along the path. So he did. He walked along the path. And he started winding through the forest. And then he saw something off to his left. And he looked over, and there, shining, shimmering, bright as you could imagine, was a beautiful white unicorn with a really big silver horn sticking out of its head. It was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen. And he walked over to the unicorn. The unicorn stood there looking at him. He touched the unicorn and started to pet pet it. And it felt, well, it didn't feel like, you know, some horse that had uh, had a fake horn stuck on it. It felt like something totally different. And as he touched it, he almost felt like he was talking to it. And he was sure that the unicorn, though the unicorn, of course, wasn't talking, that the unicorn was telling him, get on my back. So... The boy climbed up onto the unicorn's back, and the unicorn started to run. Now, unicorns, especially the kind on this planet, in addition to not eating kids, they are very fast runners. But they're also very good at keeping a rider on their back. So, this unicorn blasted through the forest, and the little boy, holding on lightly to the mane of the, horror, of the uh, unicorn, was looking around and seeing the amazing things. He, when they went by a lake that had water that, well, couldn't quite tell what color it was. It almost looked golden. But then 
when he looked back again, it looked kind of silver, and other times it looked pink or blue or green. It seemed to have all the colors of the rainbow, and he swore he saw what looked like a blue whale jump up out of the water and land. He almost thought that the whale might have waved at him too, which was really cool. And so, as he, as he uh, rode along on the back of this unicorn, he was pretty sure that uh, at the speed they were going, that he was seeing the entire planet. And he looked up, and he could look straight at the beautiful blue light coming from the the sun of that planet. And he felt like the, pretty much the luckiest kid ever. Not only was he on another planet, he was on a really cool planet too, with unicorns that do not eat kids. He tried not to think too much about the ones that do eat kids. But anyway, he was blasting along and having the most wonderful time he'd ever had. And as he was going, he found, as he looked down, that the unicorn was, was running over water, running up over mountains. They have mountain goats on this planet, but I can't even start describing those. They look way different, but they're definitely mountain goats. Anyway, soon up ahead, he saw in the distance something that didn't look alien. He saw something that he knew he'd seen before. He saw the en enchanted house again. And he figured either the house had moved to, uh, to be there where he was about to stop, or he had somehow gone all the way around the entire planet and back. But anyway, as they were coming closer to the enchanted house, the unicorn started to slow down a bit. And it stopped right in front of the house. And the little boy got off of the unicorn. And in his excitement, he threw his arms around the unicorn's neck and hugged it and said, Thank you so much. And he was sure that the unicorn said, You're welcome. How, in whatever way, unicorns on that planet talk. And so, he walked back up uh, to the, onto the porch and into the enchanted house and sat down, still not being able to believe what had happened to him. And then he th said, wait, just a second, um, do you, uh, is there a, a jar or something here? And then all of a sudden there was a small little jar on the, on the, the coffee table. He picked it up, ran back out, and he scooped up some dirt, some dirt that was this bright kind of red color, put it in the jar, sealed it up, went back in the house, sat down, holding the jar, and said, house, um, I'm ready to go home now, and heard the voice say, please stay seated during the duration of the transportation, returning to earth, and so he sat there, and once again, nothing seemed to be happening, but he knew something was happening. And then, after about a minute, he heard the voice say, You have arrived at your destination. Please exit the house. And so, holding on to his jar of dirt, of earth from, well, I guess you can't really call it earth, of dirt, we'll use the word dirt, from this amazing planet with unicorns that do not eat kids, he, he left the house, he got out to the sidewalk and turned around to look at the house and saw himself looking at the house that had always been there before. The, man, the enchanted house was gone, but he had a funny feeling that enchanted house might come back again. And he still had his jar. He went home and he put that jar in his dresser drawer. And every time he opened up that drawer, to get some clothes out, to get ready in the morning, he would look at that jar of beautiful bright red dirt and would think about his amazing journey to the planet with the unicorns that don't eat kids. The end.